Before we start to do the jointing, there are a couple of essential steps that need carrying out. Firstly, we must make sure that any excess mortar that's in the joint is removed. This should be done as soon as possible after the laying is complete, say the next day, as the mortar will still be slightly soft. The depth of the joints when using Pavestone Point Fix jointing compound must be a minimum of 24 millimeters and the width must be a minimum of six millimeters. This is critical to ensure that the joint has enough product in to achieve its maximum strength. And finally, the last job to do is to rinse any debris and remaining mortar dust out of the joints. Okay, so the patio is all laid, the beds are all nice and hard, and I've rinsed all the debris out of the joints. It's now time to point the patio, and I'm going to use the Pavestone Point Fix All Weather Jointing Compound. A few tools I'm going to use to do the job, a mixing trowel, some tools for compressing and striking the product off, a broom, a mixing tub, and a bucket of clean water and a sponge. So that's everything I'm going to need. I'm now going to point the patio. The first stage of the jointing is to mix up the point fix. Open both bags and tip the contents into a clean, flexible tub or a bucket. I'm tipping all the material from both bags in as I have the whole patio to do. If you only have a small section of paving to do, then you can mix a smaller amount, but it's important that you mix an equal quantity of each bag together. The remaining material in the bags can be put back in the tub for use at a later date. Now, the essential part at this stage is to make sure that both parts are thoroughly mixed together. I like to use a bucket trowel as it allows me to get right to the bottom of the tub and get all of the unmixed product up to the surface and mix in again. There are many other tools that you can use just so long as it is mixed correctly. Keep mixing both parts together until you can see only one colour material in the tub. If you can still see two colours, then it needs more mixing. Here I can just see that there are still two colours, so some more mixing is needed. You must never use Pavestone Point Fix when the surface temperature of the paving is below 5 degrees Celsius or above 25 degrees Celsius. It's also worth noting that Point Fix is not suitable for use on porcelain paving. The reason I like to use these flexible tubs is because they allow me to flip the material inside. A bit like when a chef flips the ingredients in a pan to make sure that they all cook evenly. You can just see that some of the unmixed product has now come to the surface, so another mix with the trowel is required. One final flip of the tub, a quick mix up with a trowel, and this mix is all ready to be used. If for whatever reason you find that there is still unmixed material when you tip the tub or the bucket up, you can either pop it back in and mix it again, or if it's a very small amount, you can just mix it together as I'm doing here. This just shows how important it is to get the mixing done correctly while in the tub. Now the point fix is thoroughly mixed, it's time to point the paving. Tip the product onto the paving and sweep it into the gaps. I find a small soft broom works well as it moves the material around on the paving much better than a hard bristled broom. Don't worry if there is still some water in the gaps. The joy of using Point Fix is that it can still be used when the surfaces are wet or even if it's raining. Keep sweeping the materials around the area and you will see that it just falls into the joints. The next stage is another essential one and that is to compact the Point Fix down into the joints. Simply sweeping the material into the gaps will mean that the maximum strength won't be achieved. Here I am using a jointing iron to really press the point fix into the gap. 
I keep dragging the loose material from around the area and pressing it firmly down. Don't worry about dragging the tool along the joint, it won't cause any damage to the paving. Once you're satisfied that the joint is full and no more material will compact down, then take the broom and sweep all the excess material onto the next area. If you see any material that may be against the natural ribbon of the paving, just simply sweep it away. And if you see any debris, like this leaf, it's important that you remove it. Now you can see that I'm really pushing on with the jointing, with the majority of the patio completed. Even though I haven't got mine on, it's a really good idea to wear some knee pads. Simply keep gathering up the loose material in the area and pressing it firmly into the gaps. That's another area, fully compacted, a quick sweep of the loose material and I will move on to the final area. As the material is still soft, it's a really good tip not to stand on the filled joints. If you do accidentally step on a gap that's just been filled, rub over it with the jointing bar again. When it comes to the exposed edges, I recommend pressing the point fix into the joint right up to the edge and then use your fingers to almost mould the product into the gap. If you're really careful, this method will work fine. Just make sure not to sweep the edges until the product has fully hardened. Remember, this stage of the project is all about the finishing touches. So a little more time with these small details will make all the difference. And that's it, we're nearly done. Just one last job and that's to wipe down the slabs with a damp sponge. This will remove any last remaining residue from the surface of the slab. For further details on pavestone point fix, including coverage and available colours, see the jointing compound section on the pavestone website. And it's all finished, brushed off, wiped down with a sponge and a light hose down and then once the point fix is hardened, this patio will be ready to bring out the furniture and a few pots. For more installation hints and tips, visit the website pavestone.co.uk